sometime in the 2020s, two geeks from across social media formed an alliance to bring you geek news from across the nostalgiaverse. They are Jacob's Toys and Super Soul. So strap yourselves in for the weekly live show that brings you toy news, TV and movie reviews, special guests, opinions, tangents, and bad impressions. Reveals, releases, thoughts, and maybe dreams. So prepare yourselves for the Geek Week in Review. Live. What's up? Hello. Hello and welcome back to the Geek Week with me, Jacob's Toys, and of course, the wonderful one and only Super Sorrel. A little bit of a little bit of growth there on the chin this week. <laughs> Not quite as smooth as we were last week. <laughs> um, thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. This is episode 148 of the Geek Week. We are going to get to comments as we work our way through. Quick couple of shout outs. Ezra Gantos, Todd World, Sean the Sheep, Luna Spring. Still my favorite <laughs> username. Hello, how you doing? Uh, Stug's there um andy roberts shelly's in the chat andy h is there figure fan 36 mick specter is in the chat as well hello guys we will get to the rest of you as we work through and um, we're going out across a whole bunch of different um channels and streaming sites and stuff so if you've got a comment if you want to join in with the chat drop it in the comments wherever it is that you're watching um, and we'll do our best to put it up on the screen and get you involved and if you're watching us on catch up what is it that they need to put in the chat mr sorrel hashtag catch up crew there we go. If you are watching us on repeat, then make sure you put that in the comments of the video that you're watching. Um, it's good to see a couple of those throughout the week popping up. Um, it's We try to do our best to get to them as we go through. But yeah, it's good. It's good. It's been a weird week, hasn't it? There's not been a huge amount happen up until you... the last 30 minutes. <laughs> About to the last sort of hour and then Ryan yeah. Reynolds drops a bombshell that he's going to drop the whole trailer for uh, Deadpool and Wolverine tomorrow. Although I did like the, the little teaser he did put out that was kind of cool yeah. it was it, it was like it, I, I like i like the fact that the, it was like a little um homage to wolverine yes. i liked all the little yeah it was a very cool little way of doing it yeah definitely for anyone that hasn't seen it yet um about 30 minutes 35 minutes ago maybe um ryan reynolds dropped a teaser which is basically as sorrel said just a homage of all of wolverine's appearances and then a little bit of a little bit of a sort of clickbait at the end with the uh the bit of deadpool laying on the ground and then just says full trailer coming tomorrow so we will see a full trailer tomorrow mm. any predictions what do you think what are we going to see is it going to be a lot of nothing or is it going to be a lot of nothing play? i don't think yeah. i i think ryan reynolds knows how to play it and i think he's going to keep everything pretty close to the chest till the till the cinema yeah i'm hoping so far, anyway we're we not no. far away now not far away at all i um, think we're going to get because we know wolverine's in it so i think we're going to get a lot of wolverine appearance look like we're going to get a better shot of hugh jackman in the yellow and in the yellow and blue i think yeah i think we'll, we'll get probably some really cool fight fight scenes and i don't think we'll get any reveals or anything i think all that will be saved potentially yeah that's the thing um mick Spector just very quickly just said in the chat there potentially see the mask with it leaking so much um for anyone that hasn't seen they did release kind of was it like like a movie poster art or something wasn't it or or merchandise i've not it seen this wolverine. yeah it had wolverine in the mask um, it's cool. just a, a picture of Wolverine, a picture of Deadpool. Um, I want to say popcorn bucket, but it wasn't. Popcorn bucket is just on my mind. But it was something like that, just literally a sort of waist upwards um, picture. But yeah, I mean, we could potentially see the mask. I think that would definitely oh, be fun, have yeah. a big pop. Um, they dropped the poster as well. Did you see the poster? Nope. <laughs> the poster is literally a callback to the Logan films. Remember the Logan ah, cool. yeah, yeah. was logan's hand and x23 like holding on to him yeah um, and this is literally logan's hand with a um deadpool kind of holding on to the claw so it's, <laughs> it's literally you put them side by side and they look very similar so so yeah so that's that's out that's out we are going to get something next week so um uh, next week so tomorrow mm -hmm. so if if it's big maybe we'll jump on and do a, a geek week live and just discuss the the trailer um yeah. all depends what's in it all depends what's in it yeah um what else has been going on this week before we kind of get into our scary movie stuff well i do just want to address because i know a lot of people have been commenting on it and stuff um about that i've not been going live as often um in the i'm in the middle of a bit of a revamp of what i do and what i'm doing and stuff um on the channel again um just 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 because 
I've got to admit, I do think the uh, uh, the action figure uh, industry is on its ass at the moment. I'm not going to lie. Yep. I'm not enjoying collecting any action figures right now. I, I, can't, I can't remember. I think it was Street Fighter was the last ones I got. And pretty way, I've not even picked up Ken yet. I've got him on my shopping list, but I've not picked him up. I'm kind of... <laughs> I don't know. As horrible as this is to say, I'm kind of done with action figures. I'm kind of done. You need to get into hot toys, mate. Nah, I can't do that. It's too expensive. Uh, what I, but what I'm... <laughs> I've gone back to though what I'm enjoy what I what I enjoyed when I first started the damn channel in the first place, and mm -hmm. a bit of a bit a bit of all sorts in regards to Disney, Jurassic Park, you know, gaming and all sorts of other stuff. And I've been doing like a lot of the uh, blind baggy stuff, and I enjoy that. And just been going back to kind of what I enjoy doing rather than a bunch of action figures that I'm not enjoying. So yeah, no, I will be going like. Yeah, I will be sorting out my lives again real soon. Tuesdays, I will be going live, hopefully, uh, more more frequently. Probably from, it won't be this week coming up, probably a week after. Uh, as you can see behind me, I'm currently in the middle of sorting everything out. And there's a big hole behind me, behind me on, on this side. I can't do this. There we go. On that side. And um, I'm going to be um, sorting out the the display and stuff like that with all my new minifigs and all that stuff and yep. I, yes andy h i can see your little cheeky little comment there is this revamp three three thirty nine million four hundred and yeah <laughs> thanks for both of it um <laughs> no I, I don't think you're alone though sorrow i don't think you're alone I, you know we've said this a couple of times i mean i feel very much in a similar boat that there's there's a big kind of shift going on um i mean you can't well you can actually see if i move this way look I've just got boxes behind me. Uh -huh. Literally, those boxes go all the way around, and I've just stripped everything back. And um, I am in the middle of a big move, so my whole kind of setup is going to all change. And I'm kind of using that as an opportunity to to kind of pick out what I like and what I want and stuff. But I must admit, I picked mm. up a couple of Marvel Legends last couple of weeks. I got like a mm. um, couple of the X Men ninety seven, the Angel, the Saber Tooth two pack. Um, and it was quite cool to actually just pick up the odd one and two here mm. and there, um, as opposed to kind of just feel obligated to kind of go through everything that was released because that's the thing. Yeah. A lot of it doesn't appeal to me anymore. A lot of it doesn't appeal to me. And that's the thing. It's our, at the end of the day, it's our channels. We've got to do what we want to do. And uh, like, as much as I feel like I'm offering a, like, I like to think my videos are offering a service to people. I've got to enjoy what I'm putting out. And if I'm not enjoying it, then the video is going to be crap. And, cool. um, at the, at, I know a lot of people like again, Mick with the, uh, he'll be back on figures again next week. I don't think I will anytime soon. What I've been enjoying more than anything is reviewing things and having more fun with my daughter on the channel like Paige has been getting massively into like the zombies and stuff we've collected the entire line together uh we've got all the five nights of freddy snaps we've done all them together and at the moment we're, we're getting all the capsule sheiks and stuff like all that we like we, i've moved on to other stuff and yeah. um i know it's not for everyone on the, i mean we've, we've been i've been really enjoying collecting blind bag of stuff with my daughter and like have do like lynn my wife she's involved more than she has been in a long time because i've been yeah. doing harry potter and disney and she's been in, they've both been appearing in a lot more vlogs recently because i'm i'm, I'm collecting things they're interested in yeah so i think no. it's, it's that case isn't it that there's you know you cast your mind back to kind of 2018 2017 type time things were a lot harder to get hold of you know if you if you got hold of a certain figure it was exciting to review it or to look at it or to share pictures of it because it was you know it, it was harder to come by whereas now there's such an abundance of everything that mm -hmm. it doesn't feel as fun I, I do get where you're coming from i really do yeah and i've recaptured that i know this sounds really stupid but i've recaptured that feeling of childhood fun like yeah. when i was like when you were a kid and you would pick up something that and you'd be like i can't wait to get this home and like yeah. literally the stupid as it is these daft little dinosaurs have been i've enjoyed unboxing these stupid little things more than i've enjoyed any marvel legend for the past year i got more nostalgic feelings unboxing the disney Dobbs versions of goofy movie than i have for any NECA figure i've opened in years so i mean again i know it's not for everyone i'm probably going to lose some subs over it yeah. but i'm collecting things that appeal to me yeah. and my, what if you if people cast their mind back to my channel and where like where i used to go with stuff some of my most popular videos are like the the Maui 
talking figure from Moana, the Groot that danced when it when you played audio, and I mm. reviewed all those kind of things. I kind of fell into this thing of doing Marvel Legends and Black Series a lot more when COVID and that took over, and they because because you couldn't go to the shops to buy yeah. the kiddie stuff, like the kids related content stuff. I fell into this action figure sort of niche, if you will. Yeah. And for the longest time, that's all I collected because that was what was available for like those two years that we were in lockdown. Yeah. And now, now we've kind of come out the other side of it and things have caught up again. I'm now able to go back to collecting kind of the, the random stuff that I used to enjoy. Yeah. So, no, I'm with been, you on that one, mate. I'm with you yeah, on that. Yeah, and there's been a lot of people uh, that have commented over the last week on my channel saying, I'm a, I'm a selling out for Five Nights at Freddy's and things like that. Like, if they go back on my channel, I reviewed the first wave of Five Nights things back in uh, 2017 uh, when, when the first line of merch ever came out. I was like one of the first people in line at Toys R Us that morning to buy them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, uh, just, yeah, that little rant's over with. But, yeah, I just thought I'd address it because I know some people were commenting about it. Yeah. No, that's cool. That is cool. Um, Andy H, you just said in the chat. Um, oh no, hang on. Look, figure fan thirty six. <laughs> WWE figure. Sorry. Um, Andy H is in the chat. On the back of Deadpool three, I've just sent you both a message with a pic of the US sales promo stuff for Deadpool. I just looked at that, and I saw that earlier on on Facebook or Instagram or something, and someone was saying that that was the promo desk for last the last film. So I don't know whether this is a new version or whether this is for the last film or whatnot, but. It's very cool, but it does get me thinking that there hasn't been as much of a promo push with this one at all. I think they know it's kind of selling itself. So. Yeah. Um, but either way, it's a very cool picture. Um, Mick Spector Mick. said as well, have yeah. we talked about how good Fallout was? Absolutely fantastic. Not just an adaptation, but added to the game's lore. Literally um, just finished it two hours ago. I've literally got to the say, final episode now. We haven't because I binged watched it all <laughs> at the time. <laughs> Sora was only up to like episode two. Um, but yeah, let's talk about it for a little bit. Uh, spoilers ahead, Fallout. We're going to talk about it very quickly. Um, if you haven't got to the final episode, then obviously fall, uh, Fallout. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Um, there, now that we've warned everyone, you called it, didn't you, Sorrel? You said it. And that's what, as soon as that scene hit, I was like, I can't wait for him to see this because I know he's well, going to be when... going. <laughs> yeah <laughs> well w when they were in the boardroom and it showed all the execs from all the different you know the, the they obviously got all the different vaults and things we yeah. saw the fallout new vegas guy he's actually in the game he's a game character i forgot his name off the top of my head now but yeah he sat there and he's one of the he's one of the people that owns the vegas vaults and yeah. he's in he's the he's one of the big bosses in the game so yeah. to have him on the screen was kind of cool and cool. uh, yeah it was it was awesome how it all fell together at the end i kind of like the story mm. the story progression was brilliant like that ending bit where it all just kind of clicked into place i did not click that her dad was going to be like a pre-vault guy like i didn't didn't see that come in mm -hmm. I, I feel silly now because it was very obvious when you look back at it at the beginning but I, it didn't click and i think that's just because the storytelling was so good that i was so mm -hmm. invested in all of the the side missions and the you know side stories and stuff that i didn't even kind of I, my brain wasn't kind of going to you know who is he and all that kind of stuff and i thought that was brilliant i i knew that was her mum straight up when there was like the body yeah. just there like that was that was obvious but no i liked it i liked it a lot do you want to feel very old go on you know the the guy that plays her brother yeah the guy that plays lucy's brother in the vault yeah, yeah the little like mousy one yeah so he was in hannah montana and he played rico he was the little he was he was younger than miley cyrus at the time and he was the little kid that was like you will never conquer rico he was like the really weird one wow. he was like what nine or ten years old in that and like i was i was sat there watching it going where do i know this kid's face from where do i know him from? googled him rico hannah montana i'm like oh my god <laughs> i've got to say that we were talking about um water goggins last week yeah um who plays the ghoul hands down like such such an awesome character such an awesome portrayal of a character like he was just you know he wasn't quite a good guy but he wasn't quite a bad guy but i was rooting for him i was like come on man like, i want this guy to succeed like i had to laugh this week my wife showed me a <laughs> a bunch of things people are making adult fanfics about the ghoul 
That's Women weird. apparently like the ghoul, which yeah. is the weirdest thing on the planet, isn't it? He's got no yeah. nose for one. But yeah, there's a lot of adult fanfic out there about him, which is being weird because it's Walla Goggins. That's weird. <laughs> the that weirdest weird. man on the planet. Every yeah. time I saw him, especially towards the end, every time he came on screen, he's doing this whole, I'm the cowboy and I'm cool act. I just pictured him from Big Bang Theory. I just pictured him from that episode of Big Bang Theory where, because Raj was banging his missus. Oh, and he was yeah. the ex-husband, yeah, yeah. And he, he, there's that bit where the Raj imagines that he's there when he's kissing her, and he's behind him. And he's going, "I'm so alone." <laughs> That's no, all I, I could I, hear in my head. I can, after last week's episode, <laughs> I couldn't see past him being Sons in. About a, in drag. I was just waiting for the ghoul to like, as he was walking <laughs> along, to like have like heels on or something, you know what I mean, like, or fishnets or something. But no, it was just, it was just a very awesome series altogether. It got me because I'd never played Fallout properly. I like, I, I dipped in and out of it when I was working at game and stuff, and it was just one of them ones where I just didn't have time to commit to the campaign that kind of stuff. So it was all quite fresh for me in this in this series, and I got to kind of doing more kind of going down the rabbit hole of all the different vaults and all this kind mm. of stuff and there are some dark vaults out there did you know that like oh yeah there's all like the law that goes with fallout and that and like the three worst ones that i that i came across was that there's a vault where there was some kind of like contamination and they're all ghouls so they've all just been turned into ghouls so that's like you know that's a bad one there was one vault where there was one man and mm. loads of puppets. <laughs> it just he was just left with loads of puppets. But the worst one that has never been seen in a game or anything like that is that there was nine hundred and ninety nine men in there and one woman. Oh, and Jesus! That, that's the experiment that the vault went down, and they've never shown it in a game or anything like that. But it's in the books, and I just thought, man, that's. But what a cool like kind of like explanation into, um, you know, in, into sort of psychology and human psychology and mm. that kind of stuff. Anyway, let's move on. One let's of the on. oh, just very quick. One of the best <laughs> Easter eggs in the final episode when they put the oh. code in. You know the code for the uh, Cold Fusion. Yeah, ten ten ninety seven. That was the release of of Fallout One. Ten nice. ten ninety seven is the release. Nice. So nice. I, as as soon as that came up, I was like, I'm pretty sure that is the release date of the. Of mm. it. And I had to Google it. And it was yeah. I, I, I thought that was, that's a really cool little Easter egg to add in there. That is a very cool Easter egg. That is. Um, Andy H said, someone give me the thumbs up when we're done talking about Fallout. <laughs> <laughs> um, there we go. There we go. Um, but cool. no, it's not, it's, it just answered Mick's question. It's not It's not taking me <laughs> back to Fallout 76. I've not gone back to the game, but I have been playing Fallout 3 and I am going to be moving on to New Vegas next week now. So uh, I've been playing the the ones that are on game because they're on, they're on Game Pass uh, for yep. Xbox. So you can play them for free. Um, there's Fallout 3 and there's Fallout 76 on there and Fallout 4. So I'm slowly working my way through those. But I've got the Fallout Shelter mobile game and I'll, I've got back into that. That That is awesome. Where you I'm make your own little shelter. I'm gonna to have to pick one up and start playing it now. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a convert. I'm, I'm well into Fallout now. There we go. Um, so the title of this week's episode is slightly different than normal. We called it "What's Your Favorite Scary Movie?" Because we're going to talk about horror a little bit more tonight. Um, and it's not going to be a reoccurring theme. It's just tonight we decided decided that we're going to discuss horror movies a little bit more. Um, mainly because Sorrel went out and saw Abigail. Yeah. And of course, um. There's been a couple of trailers dropped this week as well for new upcoming horror films as well. Yeah. Um, before we get into the horror massively, did you have any major pickups this week? Um, I did, but I don't think it's anything that's going to interest this crowd, but I did. Yeah. The only, literally, the only thing I got was Ken. I got a couple of 3D printed things you can see Ghostbuster wise behind me. I got um, some of that'll, course, I've got something that, that will officially give you nightmares. Hang on. Go on. And of course, did get Ken in the end as well. So now, I must admit, the thing, that, the thing that upset me about Ken, though, is that I pulled it out and showed my youngest son. He's like, who's that? I was like, it's Ken. He went, what, Barbie's husband? I was like, <laughs> no, no. Is that all that children, that when you say Ken, all people think of is Ryan Gosling. I was like, no, yeah. this is like the Street Fighter character that, like, kicks Ryan's backside. But anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> Mick Spector said, show us the Ghostbuster stuff. Very quickly, I'll show you the Ghostbuster stuff. So. Um, good friend uh, at GLP3D did me a little uh, Ghostbusters sign, little 3D printed Ghostbusters sign to go with my um, Plasma Black series. 
um and a little slimer as well which i painted up myself um, i'll cool. do a video on that but he's a little bit bigger he's got his bum um he's a little bit bigger than the actual figures um, that's based on the diamond select sculpt isn't it that's the diamond select yeah, sculpt it's it's not far off at all yeah it's, um, got, it's got the butt <laughs> yeah um yeah the diamond select one had that didn't it annoyingly yeah. i had the diamond select movie and comic book uh uh slimer characters years ago and i sold them on stupidly but this is to go with my plasma series it's a little bit bigger but it will it will work it will work um and then my favorite piece is my stay puff marshmallow man kind of bust so mm. i asked him to to do me one so that i could put it at the back of my display so that it will fit kind of flush against like against the wall of like my display and have my figures kind of with the rooftop diorama and stuff. So I'll have like a, a full scale stay puff. Um, this one's a little bit smaller than what I'm going to finalize with. But um, again, I just, I painted that up myself. So it's basically just a display piece. But it'll be good for action figure photography as well. Like I can put him there with the, the four characters and stuff and have them busting ghosts. Yeah, let's see if you can get him to do the one, you know, where stay puffs pulling the like, Ooh, face like I went, when he yeah. gets hit and then he could have them all firing the streams at him that'd be a really cool little diorama piece um the thing is obviously 3d printing is not cheap when you yeah, you know yeah. it's not expensive but it's not cheap but obviously to make something I, the the final kind of what i'm going for is about that tall so it makes it a lot bigger so it's kind mm. of head and shoulders scale. above yeah it's sort of more to scale but this one will work for the time being um yeah there we go mick said um are you collecting plasmas now, Jacob? Such a good line. Um, literally, the only ones I've got, I've got the mm. afterlife ones. That I got a few of those, um, but I got the four slimed versions of the the original cast. So I just thought, you know what, Ghostbusters are a, they're close to my heart. So I needed to have a Ghostbuster representation on my shelves. So um, there you go. Uh, mix it. If you sell that one, hit me up. I will, mate. I will. Um, Don't forget, you picked up Jigsaw. <laughs> don't forget i didn't pick him up i had jigsaw here he is <laughs> yeah well i don't I can't remember what why you talk about jigsaw but yeah i, I had jigsaw <laughs> he's in my box no i had to play around with some action figure photography and basically just popped the head out put gambit on and did that little kind of um final x-men episode five mm. scene um but i'm not going to take credit for that because they, in all fairness a lot of people did a very similar thing at the same type of time so uh, you know it's not it's not a completely out there idea you know you, you you see a character in a white suit and you think what marvel legends have a white suit and jigsaw's pretty much the only one bar the rose yeah um so there are loads of people out there with photos and images and stuff so i'm not gonna take credit for the or origin of the idea because i'm sure somebody thought of it before me but either way if you've got a jigsaw and you've got a gambit pop the gambit head on and you've got that episode five version of him um i'm i'm, I'm a sucker for for thing one thing i have got coming though um I'm, I'm a sucker for gambit i really am a sucker for gambit <laughs> um and obviously my collection's grown in height so had to put a gambit in there, got a gambit in there yeah, yeah. <laughs> the thing is now and now he needs a rogue that's the only problem mate yeah oh no no, no she's she's very obtainable oh she's she's, very... she, she's already on the order list <laughs> she's, no she's she, she's just not a difficult one to come by really um okay. for anyone that's interested you can pick up a i believe it's so so toys did a one six scale rogue in the comic book accurate and she goes for about 180 quid she's that's not an cool. expensive no not an expensive one to get um but i haven't i haven't ordered her or anything i'm gonna let gambit stand so low for a little while um but yeah so, did you have you've you've heard of fugglers right yeah yeah those weird little plushes that come in cardboard boxes for kids and you know yeah. they did a crossover with turtles yes i remember well, those. i was i was thinking about picking up those i was, I was stood in the aisle and an entertainer and i'm looking at them and i'm thinking these are awesome but i don't want to spend like 50 quid on four plushes and um i was like mm, i can't have just one turtle i need to get all four so i'll skip those for now and then i turned around and saw the weirdest thing on the planet that i just had to buy it are we ready who lives in a pineapple under the sea fogling square pants that is hideous <laughs> and he's got he's got realistic weird little teeth and only two of them as well 
<laughs> that's, that's the thing of nightmares. That is the thing of nightmares, isn't it? I saw it. I was like, oh, I have to own this. It's disgusting. I swear there's an episode where he looks like that, though. <laughs> <laughs> and just to, just for more nightmares, you can get a Patrick that is furry as well. Oh, man. Is he square, though? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So, he, yeah, I can't, I'm going to take him out of the box and do a full review. But, yeah, he's a proper, he's got legs and arms and everything. It's the proper thing, but, yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Um, that is pretty cool. Just quickly as well, on X Men ninety seven, while we're kind of just briefly skimming past it, not a huge amount to report with this week's episode because they skipped away from the main, didn't they? they skipped away from the main kind of storyline. I've not the, seen it this week. I've got no clue. Not. Um, there's a really cool callback for Storm. Um, and I've I've, I've literally got her at arm's reach, reach because I'm. Because I'm clearing out a load of my Marvel Legends, this is one one costume that I decided to keep. I was just like, it's classic Storm. I can't let her go. And I'm really glad that I kept this suit. That's <laughs> <laughs> all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm just very, very pleased that I kept this version of Storm. Very, very pleased. There you go. <laughs> very, very, very pleased. Um, I won't get forged down. That's fine. But no, it's uh, yeah, it was a good episode. It was a good episode. But I'm looking forward to next week's. So, what's your favourite scary movie, so <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows my favourite scary movie. Everyone knows what I'm going to say. Trick or treat, Sam. Sam is my oh, icon. Is. Sam is my guy. You know what? I really I've struggle. An, I've got an entire cubby hole dedicated. Where is it? There we go. An entire cubby hole dedicated to Sam. Yeah. Okay, Sam or Chucky. Um, uh, I mean, Chucky's up there as well, but Sam is the. Is you the know girl. what? I really struggled with this. Like, I really, really did struggle with it. And I'm just <clears> going to go. I did a quick poll on Instagram, um, and there was loads of classic, the classic answers, the kind of classic what you would kind of expect. A um, couple of random ones as well. Things like Alien was on there. Um, obviously, all your Freddies, your Jasons, your Charles plays. Exorcism of Emily Rose, uh, my friend Will said as well. Um, very good movie, actually. Um, and I really struggled with this. I really struggled. Like Carl in the chat has said, got to be the thing with Kurt Russell. It's not a bad shout. Good movie. Um, but I, you know what? I really struggled with it. Like, really struggled with it. Because I don't remember the last time I was really scared. If that makes mm. sense. And obviously the title that we put is your favorite scary movie. And I don't remember the last horror film that really, like, really scared me. See, when it comes to films that freak, like, like Sam doesn't scare me in the slightest. It never did, never will. It's not that kind of no. film. It's more, it feels more like an adult version of Goosebumps. Um, I felt the, the last film, honestly, when I was, because I've, I've been watching horror films since I was a kid, so, I mean, I'm quite numb to it now. Mm. Uh, like, a, a lot of people were jumping in the cinema at, at the Abigail. And I mean, a lot of people was jumping in the cinema with that, but I was like, I was laughing, I was laughing all the way through. I was like, this is amazing. It's a great film, but it wasn't scary, uh, in my opinion. Uh, but I mean, the last time I was truly scared would probably be when I was about 13, uh, about 12, no, I was about 12 or 13. I was watching th you know, 13 Ghosts. That was the last film, I think, that scared me as a kid. Good film. Great movie, Good. but uh, some, of the, some of those scenes in that scared me as a kid yeah it's you know what it's funny in our house because like my wife hates hates scary movies like she hates any that if i'm watching the walking dead she's kind of like she can't watch it it's the kind of noise mm. of the zombies and that kind of stuff or the walkers sorry they don't call them zombies don't we don't use the <laughs> z word um and we were talking about this at dinner and you know we've got two older kids and we we're talking about like kind of what constitutes as kind of scary and that they're big into their stranger things and everything like that and I was like, you know what? Only two films actually come to mind that I remember being genuinely scared. Um, and the first one was The Ring, but the Japanese mm. version. Yeah. Because in in the ultimate wisdom of my parents, when that came out, it was obviously in the cinema and it was kind of being talked about, oh, The Ring, The Ring. And in HMV, they had the ring on the side. Well, clearly it wasn't the version in the cinema. So let's do a little bit of a background check on this film. And went home and watched it with my little brother. And there's the scene where the guy pops his head up in the loft. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? And he yeah. turns around and she's just there. There. Still in my head. Like I have that. Whenever <laughs> I go up in the loft, I have to do a 360 just because of that. So 
that would constitute as one that scared me. And surprisingly, the only other film that could come up on the top of my list is one we were talking about last week, and that's the Blair Witch Project. Oh, yeah. Because I was genuinely scared of what I saw, not kind of wetting my pants in the cinema, but it left a kind of a lasting impression on me at the time. And because of the age and the the way it was executed, and obviously it was all very new at the time as well. So, yeah, I think that Blair Witch and Japanese version of The Ring are the only ones that have genuinely scared me in the last, you know, 20, 30 years. But, yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's where I'm at. Yeah, when it comes to scary movies, there's not there's not much that has scared me. Um, I tend to be more scared of things that are eerie more than scary. Like I don't I don't I don't stay scared at films like stuff like that. But like, there's certain things that will set me up just like to freak me out. And that's when you know when you get a scene in a horror film that's been that's drawn out. Mm. So there are certain scenes in Abigail Comes Home that made me jump the first time I saw them. Like, Abigail Comes Home is not a scary movie in the slightest, but there are certain bits of that film, like when the little girl can see the bride in the hallway. Yeah. And you know damn well she's going to come run. It's, it's the same with the portrait in Conjuring. You know she's going to run at her. You know in your head you're going, that's going to move, she's going to move, and then she moves, yeah. but you still jump. Things like that freak me out. When they do, like, a elongated scene that drags itself out, and you know it's coming, but you don't know when. That or, freaks me out. The, the flip side of that, films like insidious where it's like there's no oh, draw out and it's just instant just bang. Like where he was behind the guy do you know what i mean like those yeah, bits yeah, yeah. are the good ones like i i genuinely like being scared and mm-hmm. i think the the last thing that really there was a um there was a show in london called ghost stories a yeah. few years back um and i went to see it not knowing what to expect and it was written by or co-written by the guy that wrote Darren brown's like stage things mm. um and one of the guys from league of gentlemen and it was genuinely one of the scariest things i've ever seen because it was so immersive and it was these these three kind of short stories but it was so immersive and it was so well done that it was those kind of jump scares that you did not see come in played out in front of you physically on stage like it was brilliant like brilliantly done um and there's there's still one scene in that show that I hear it in my head. Like I can hear the the word. I won't bore you with mm. the whole story, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, Andy H said the same, like, it's not about the scene that's scaring you. It's the music that's playing the sound. Yeah, I'll give him that. Um, Cause like that scene that I'm on about with the nut, with, with, with the nun running at her, that is the, the, the playing that weird kids choir in the background, aren't there? The, that like, there's like yeah. a weird kids choiry sound in the background and yeah. you can see her scribbling and scribbling and scribbling and it's getting faster and faster and faster. It's that it's all the tension and the build up, isn't it? What film, gets you. What, what film was it that used that? Oh, hundreds of films have used that. That's like a TikTok's favorite horror theme now. But that like, it Tulips. Seems like when, when that was first used, it was like, mm-hmm. and really like, cheesy films as well like Fre- uh, freddy krueger like nightmare on elm street mm. but the the one two freddy's coming for you like you yeah. get something like that that leaves that lasting impression and it sticks with you mm-hmm. um but you know what i think's kind of killed it a little bit for me as well recently is everything needs to have a sequel or a follow-up yeah. and i was i was thinking about this as well before tonight's <laughs> podcast but I kind of wish we had things that were just standalone. Like, take Jeepers Creepers, for example. Like, yeah. when you say Jeepers Creepers, you think of cheesy, like, rubbish, tongue in cheek. Like, but that first Jeepers Creepers film was mm. genuinely quite freaky. And you didn't really know much about what the, the creeper was. You didn't know, you know, and it's just in long, isn't it, in that? Um, mm-hmm. and obviously the whole story kind of plays out and then they made all the sequels and it just kind of made it a Wanted joke. Down and, yeah. Yeah. And whereas that first one was genuinely quite freaky and I wish that they kind of took a leaf out of those books and, and kind of just came up with a concept and just left it like yeah. just one, one and done left it. Cause then that sticks with you. Don't give people more information because it makes it less scary. 
they did the same with the conjuring so conjuring one and two are genuinely scary films mm. and then they made annabelle which was okay annabelle one was okay but then annabelle two annabelle comes home but it did start to get watered down admittedly annabelle comes home is my one of my cheesiest favorite horror films of all time now i love the damn thing but mm. it, it it does it's like a scooby-doo adventure for god's sake it does actually water down the franchise a hell of a lot from being what yeah. it, if you think of conjuring one and then like the nun <laughs> very different movies yeah. So, I mean, yeah. yeah, they have watered it down a hell of a lot because of all the sequels now. Yeah. To the point um, where the the that last one, The Devil on Trial or whatever, the last one they did, uh, that wasn't even scary. And it, it wasn't even a ghost in the end. It was some dodgy cult. It was like, just stop now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Days of Horror in the chat. How are we doing? Said, best horror movie made has to be The Blair Witch. There we go. Said mm. it. Um, when it comes to music, there is none. You know what? I didn't even pick up on that. That there isn't, is yeah. there? Nope. Um, it is all just because of that. And I was explaining the concept of Blair Witch to my kids, and they were like, "Oh yeah, that's like yeah, no way." And I was like, "But if I showed it to you now, it wouldn't be as scary because it was very of the time. Like yeah. you, you're not like for us that was a reality, whereas for you it wouldn't be." I went. However, they are remaking it, so when they remade it, I'll take you to see it and scare your pants. <laughs> um, but I hope that with this remake, they they stick to this kind of thing, and there's no music, and it's built up on that. I think it's going to be cell phones. I think it's going to be vloggers and yeah, YouTubers yeah. kind of a thing, and it's going to be a yeah. more modernized version of it. And they're going to be like, yeah, vloggers trying to find out the story of Blair Witch. It'll be yeah. like a sequel without saying it's a sequel. You know what I mean? It'll be kind of a continuation, I think, rather than a yeah a new film, just a modern retelling. I just hope that it's not, I can't remember the girl's name in it, but I hope that she's not the Blair Witch kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I hope it's not something yeah. like that. I hope it is literally just a, similar to what they did with the remake, where it was just completely standalone. Mm-hmm. I hope that they remake it as a completely standalone yeah. thing. Yeah, and not try and link anywhere. Yeah, it's, yeah, it is what it is. But but Abigail, so what was, what was Abigail like? So, spoilers ahead, guys, for, for Abigail. Um, great movie, really good movie. Um, do you know what I loved about it more than anything? The vampires were vampires like Lost Boys and Dawn of the Dead. No, 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 no sorry, Dust Till Dawn. Sorry, not Dawn of the Dead, Dust Till Dawn. Awesome. In meaning that you stake one of these bad boys and they blow up like a sack of meat. <laughs> And they even have a chance, at one point, one of them even has a chance to look at the screen and go, "Uh (laughs) (laughs) uh-oh. So it's very tongue-in-cheek. They knew what they were doing with this film. It isn't, I wouldn't say it's a a, a, a dark horror film or anything like that. It's the ballerina running around eating people, for God's sake. Mm. Um, They knew it was tongue-in-cheek when they were making it because the jokes in it are brilliant. But But, Dust um, Till Dawn's the same. Dust Till Dawn isn't what I'd class as a horror film. No. But it's by far one of the best vampire films out there. And they do the same sort of that. It's very much in the style of Lost Boys, Dust Till Dawn. It's very much a um, kind of a cheesy vampire movie. And yeah. you've seen from the trailer, you know, the, she she gets kidnapped, but clearly the you know the, it's like a hunting ground for her really more than anything because yeah. they get they get locked in and all that good stuff. But um, I literally I love the fact that it was it was so obvious enough that I called it weeks ago. <laughs> And it was more, I love the fact that even at the end of the film, because I told my wife my theory before the film started, and she looked at me and went, have you seen this film? I went, no, I went, but I've spot, I got it spawn. More or less down to the damn quote that, that the guy says at the end. So, spoilers ahead, at the end at the end of the movie, because there's a bit where George, es- is he called Esposito? Is it, is, no, he's not called George Esposito, is, he, is it? What's he called? I can't remember. Esposito, a guy from Breaking Bad. Yeah. He's he's kind of like in the film, as you see from the trailer. There's a bit towards the end of the film where he's like, I'm going to call your father. Because he's like in on it. Like, I'm going to call your father. And she's like, moaning him. And he, call, he, calls, he calls the big bad vampire to come pick up his daughter. And then you, you can see where it's going. Because obviously the, the, it is based on Dracula's daughter from 1932. Just a new version of it. And the bit where he walks in and he's got the black robe on. And he does the whole... come. He's got the thick accent from like Hungarian kind of accent. Like, come here, Annabelle. And, and you know, she, she comes over to him and he's like, you've been a naughty little girl. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And the girl says, because they, they kept calling him something like Balthazar or something all the way through the film. She calls right. him by his name and he goes, he goes, I have gone by many names over my lifetime. And that's kind of just the nod you need. Like, it's Dracula. They're just not saying it. 
But um, what I liked about this is um, the the people that have made it have said they will revisit it if Universal want them to, because Universal are currently working on the modernization version of the Wolfman. Mm-hmm. That is already being cast and kind of in pre-production, and that's a Universal p- your picture. Yeah. So the the studio have already kind of spoken out and said we will revisit if you would like to, because I think the thinking that could build up the the dark universe now because that was a good starting point because you kind of had dracula without having to do dracula mm-hmm. it showed you that he's got a daughter now a bit like a bit like interview with the vampire that he wanted a yep. daughter and so he bit a girl he found a girl and bit her and all that stuff because she obviously she's a little girl that's not a little girl obviously a bit, about halfway through the film they kind of do the whole i've been around for centuries kind of thing she's not a little girl she just plays they've, up to the little girl role they've done that in the they showed that bit in the trailer yeah they so yeah that trailer but um no it's it's definitely worth a watch 100 percent. go and see it it's a great movie yeah oh, amazing and it's definitely worth watching on the big screen as well i wouldn't wait for that one to come on dvd i would definitely check that out on the big screen because yeah. i watched it on cine worlds oh what do they call it it was a 4dx showing on the giant to big x screen thing so the screen was like from ceiling to floor and the scenes in it were brilliant for that because like there's a lot of scenes where she jumps off of things and dances around and she kind of danced yeah. across the screen which was quite good she's a little girl from matilda isn't she yeah <laughs> <laughs> see i couldn't once i put those two together i was like oh it's matilda <laughs> it's not, not fun like well it's, no, it's Catherine. Like and it's Catherine Newton again. I mean, she she's becoming a bit of a uh, scream queen now, isn't she? Mm, yeah. She's been in a lot of horror recently. She, she was in uh, she was in the Frankenstein sort of remakey film recently. She's been in this one, which is kind of like your Dracula kind of film. So she's 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 popping right up in a lot of horror films. Doing the rounds there, yeah. Um, speaking of scream queens, American Horror Story that's back on our screens now as well. It is. Um, have you been watching this uh, this series? I've seen the first half. I need to catch up with the second half yet. It's messed up this one. Like, it's messed up. Like I love American Horror Story and I've loved it since the beginning. Mm-hmm. But it is twisted up. Like some of it is just so messed up that you're just kind of like, how do you even come up with these ideas? But you, they've done so much with it now that I think it's kind of a case of where do we go next? I think they're kind of struggling for ideas now. They're just trying to yeah. make it as outlandish as possible now. And they've made the spin-off as well, the American Horror Stories, which is like mm-hmm. the the one-shot ones as well, but no, it's I, I, I'm look I'm I need a good new horror, like that's that's what I need. I do need a, a, a good new horror. Um, but yeah, I just uh, I don't know when it actually comes to kind of favourites. Because mm. straight away I was kind of thinking like things like Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, Friday the Thirteenth, like all of those kind of things. Yeah. But again, the the one that I think messed me up proper was the Hills Have Eyes. Oh right, okay. Like the and the Hills Have Eyes too. Like just the and and that's not it's not the same, is it? They're just horrible mountain people <laughs> that just got. But they 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 yeah they messed me up a little. They bit. did some messed up things though. <laughs> yeah, like they were problem. horrible mountain people. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know. But we've got the new Freddy Krueger as well coming out, haven't we? The the TV show, Fred. So I'm not sure if that's even real anymore. I'm really not sure if this is even real now. Oh, There's been so was. many things doing the rounds about it. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Whether it's just been... I'm not sure whether this is just a hype story that's got out of hand or what. But no studio has come out to, to decline or accept it. So I don't know anymore. No. I kind of hope they do because that Freddy Krueger... like. In the 80s and 90s, you had icons. You had, like, horror icons. And... Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, Bethany Beth. <laughs> wow. Yeah, things just got really dark really quickly. Um, <laughs> but no, but in the 80s and the 90s... And why would it be that way around, Bethany Beth? Why would it be the other way around? Like, it's like, do I look like a victim? Like, uh, um, but no, in the 80s and 90s, you had like horror icons, didn't you? You had your your Freddies, your Jasons, and the rest of it. And we were talking about this previously on another show. We just haven't got... Like, we've had lots of new characters, but no one's kind of taken that icon. You, like, know, what, you know what you've got now? What? 
So like we had the nineties, we had, um, you know, Leatherface and pinhead and we had all those kind of characters. The generation before us had, you know, your Freddie, your Jason, your Michael, the modern, the, the modern now equivalent of that literally is the nun Annabelle. You know what I mean? These characters are classed as these horror icons for the next generation, aren't they? If you ask a kid about a horror film nowadays, they're going to say to you, Chucky, Annabelle, because of all the YouTube stuff, because of all the YouTube horror stuff, they're the characters they look they look to. Yeah. And... I just don't think they've got icon status. I don't think in 10 years' time people will be like talking about them the same way as Freddy. See, I think I think Megan's gonna be up there. I think Anna. I think um, uh, what's she called? The new the new Dracula's daughter is gonna be up there. Um, mm. I think those are the characters that we're gonna see have the franchises over the next ten years. Why has Megan got a three in her name? I have no idea. Just how it's because she's meant to be a robot. So M M three G A N. I'm guessing was the 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 name of the robot like R two D two. They need some numbers in there to make it a robot. So they went with M3GN because it's stylized, isn't it? Like M&M yeah, with a backwards yeah. E. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm really surprised Chucky didn't call it M3GAN or something. Yeah. Instead of instead of acknowledging her as Megan, I'm really surprised they didn't call it M3GAN. Yeah, M3GAN. Um, John Hood's thrown a good one in. The Fly remake starring Jeff Goldblum was Nightmare Fuel. It really was. You know what? I, I talked about it a couple of weeks ago about that big old computer that he pulls out as the uh, that controls the teleporter. Um, I loved the fly, like absolutely loved it. Like it was, oh Andy H. There we go. Model three, genitive, genitive, genitive. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Android. Yeah, I remember him saying that now. Um, yeah, I loved the fly um when i was younger i was absolutely obsessed with it and the fly 2 wasn't actually even that bad I, I quite enjoyed the fly 2 um but on the same kind of vein have you seen the indie um horror film that's been released on youtube called the spider with rick grimes's son from the walking dead coral 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 um have us i don't know I'm not, I'm not sure if i have now it's on there the full video is on it's put out, it's like a fan-made, low-budget indie film, whatever right. you want to call it. It's on YouTube. It's called The Spider. Um, came out earlier this week. And it is, if you imagine The Fly meets Spider-Man, <laughs> it's that kind of thing. So, obviously, he gets, I won't give too much away, but he doesn't get Lycra, put it that way. <laughs> he 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 gets lots of eyes and stuff like that but because it's a, a low budget film it was actually quite enjoyable mm. as a horror film like as a kind of a bit of a twisted thing and some scenes are a bit drawn out and some of it's a bit amateur but it's it's a very good yeah yeah um Andy H said I've got the blu-ray a foot away from me <laughs> There we go. So he's there. Like we're we're talking about. He's pulled the Blu-ray out. He's looking at all the box and everything like that. Um, but I used to like my B movies as well. I used to like my oh, movies that B-movie. were not mainstream. That there was on on the same kind of vein as Spider-Man. What we're talking about. There was a I can't hmm. remember what it was called. I think it was called Man Spider or something. <laughs> and it was this dodgy kind of low budget version of spider-man but what happens if he gets bitten by a spider and he doesn't turn into this kind of sexy superhero <laughs> he turns into a spider and it was very similar i think the reason i liked it is it was a very similar story as to what happens in the animated series where he turns mm. into a spider um but yeah the spider is very similar to that so if you if you like the fly john um it's worth checking out the spider on youtube um it's, I mean, it's not going to win any Oscars, but it was an enjoyable <laughs> hour and a half. It was, it was an enjoyable hour and a half, definitely. I'm looking forward to seeing this whole um, nightmare um, kids universe pan out, you know, no. with Bambi and Mickey. And I'm looking forward to how this all pans out, you know. I really am. Do you think it's just going it to be a so cash grab, or do you think it's actually going to they're going to build something worthy of kind of? Well, they were all make... in they were all individual films that were just in production at once. So the yeah. guys that made Winnie the Pooh kind of reached out to all the different like, people and just said, "Do you want to build this dark universe?" And yeah. everyone's obviously jumped in on it. It's all a cash grab, but the fact that they've now sold the rights to the toys, 
gets me excited. That does yeah. get me a bit. There's a company that is they make um like re- like wrestler versions of like Dracula and Frankenstein. They're like the He Man five POA style kind of thing. Yeah. And they're making the Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey figures. Right. So that so yeah, it's madness, isn't it? Hey, but um, yeah. then they announced obviously Steamboat Willie versus Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. And I'm looking forward to that silly, silly little thing happening now. Yeah. Um, again, it's all complete nonsense, but it'll be funny because it's B movie. It's going to be crap, so it's mm. going to be funny. <laughs> but I think they'll become like cult classics in time. Yeah, because I, I they're hope... based on like you know on the characters we all know. I think as well. I think CGI and the kind of advances in <clears throat> there's a couple of things that 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 change what's scary nowadays. So like, Mm. obviously the advances in CGI are massive, I think, because people look at things and know that it's not real. Whereas in the eighties, especially, and then obviously part way into the nineties, it was all animatronics and it was all puppets and it was all doubles and all that kind of stuff. So it wasn't a case of, you know, is this thing real? It was a case of, we were watching something on screen that was physically real but it was just a case of his, you know, trying to convince our brains that, that that what we were watching wasn't real. Whereas nowadays you watch something and people know it's not real because they know what the ability of, you know, like Jurassic Park was scary because they were they were genuinely real dinosaurs. Like they were yeah. they were there. Um, and there was elements of that that were quite scary at the time. Um, the same for me when it comes to. So we're going to talk about scary films. I've got to talk about the sea because jaws was one that scared me but i didn't put it as my scary movie because it's more of an action no i don't know what you class jaws as but um obviously they used like real not real sharks but they physically made the sharks didn't they Mm -hmm. and then do you remember the film deep blue sea yeah yeah so there was parts of that where they had real animatronic sharks that they were using for certain scenes and there's there's interviews with some of the cast where they were talking about like being in the water with these real like physical sharks Mm. and it made it very scary so obviously the fear in the actors was very real because they were like acting with these sharks obviously not but there was a lot of cgi used in that as well but and i think a lot is lost today in movies because it's all cgi'd that makes sense yeah yeah, i get you and that that takes away a lot of the horror um and a lot of the the kind of fear of things yeah for me 100 percent. but there was a film called i don't know if you've ever seen it called the gate did you ever see the gate is that the one with um i don't know who uh, who the actors are in it oh my god oh no i'm thinking of ninth gate no sorry i'm thinking of ninth gate never mind no, no. this is a rubbish it's one of those typical kind of 80s movies where they went this is a good idea and basically the family dig up a tree in their garden and it opens a <laughs> gateway to hell and all these like little demon goblin things come out. And there's one scene in that film where the kid's laying in bed and they're like on its on his bookshelf and like you can sort of see him running along on the bookshelf. It scared the crap out of me for years as a kid because I, like, I can see those things on that shelf. Like they're there. They're physically there in the film. And yeah, and it it scared the life out of me for years. Mm. The extent where my dad would move things on the bookshelf, and they'd be like, "Oh, to the gate, I've dug up a tree or whatever." <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, but it's those kind of films that stick with you. Yeah, um, I tell you what, we do, we do need to discuss though. Did you see the trailer for Tarot? Yes. So this film, I like. I saw it advertised last night on the big screen. And because um, I, I I I had seen it before, but obviously I, I seeing it on the big screen is different to, to to watching it on YouTube with your headphones on. And um, I, you got got a proper look on the big screen at all the monsters in it. Mm. And it reminds me a lot of Thirteen Ghosts. 13 Ghosts, yep. And it has that cool. element to it. All yep. the different because they've they've clearly gone out their way to design these really cool looking demons that relate to the tarot card. And they've all got different, very different, unique looking characters. A bit like 13 Ghosts. Like I was I remember when 13 Ghosts came out, I was more interested in the ghost than the damn movie. I was like, what what are these ghosts? Because they were all very cool. I couldn't tell you the actual story of 13 Ghosts, but I remember at least 10 of them kind of like I can see them in my head. You know what yeah. I mean? 
Um, yeah, I thought the same thing. Funny enough, when I saw it, I was like, yeah, this is basically 13 ghosts. It's kind of taken that concept of here's a bunch of really scary stuff. We're not going to tell you a huge amount about them. And yeah, make make what you want of it sort of thing. It's um, clearly they're going to have a they're going to read the tarot of each of the people at the at the house and then that ghost is going to be the one that kills them basically isn't it that's how it's going to well. roll yeah. so they're all yeah. going to be in their own little story and yeah mm -hmm. looks very yeah, cool yeah. um very quickly in the the comments andy h said the gate had a very young stephen dorf in it wow. there you go i did not know that um and john hood said talking practical effects alien makes expensive use of uh, the new alien uh what's it called Rom uh romulus romulus makes extensive use of physical puppets hardening back to the alien and aliens that's really cool that's really good to know uh, I, yeah same with um like we always talk about this when we do horror but i mean i mean lost boys that that's the reason it still looks good to this day is because they didn't they could have very easily just used computer animation over the top of their faces, but they didn't. They went out of the way to do prosthetics and for all the blood things to be real so that the actors genuinely got covered in red slime yeah. when they blew up and stuff. That's what makes those films iconic to this day because it's not CGI, so it doesn't date. Yeah, the film looks old, but the effects still look good. Yeah. I just, talking about practical effects though, do you remember, I don't know if it might have been a bit before your time, but do you remember Michael Jackson's thriller? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when he had the extensive, like he had the 15-minute music video or whatever, yeah, he yeah. going to the movie theatre, turning into the wolf, and there was a documentary mm -hmm. that went out on like ITV or whatever about all of the makeup and all mm -hmm. of the, like, and basically sh showed you Michael Jackson with like all these tubes with air getting pumped into it to make things swell up and stuff. So yep. when you saw it on the screen, it was the the thing like the fingernails growing were were practical effects there was no cgi mm -hmm. in that. it was all practical effects and the obviously the work that goes into it and the amount of time and all the rest of it but it, it makes it look good and you can even watch that nowadays and yes it looks dated because obviously it came out in the what late 80s early 90s um and it looks dated because it's a, it's of its time but at the same time it hasn't aged if that makes sense yeah, it's the um, it's the same because at Universal Studios they do the horror makeup effects show. That mm -hmm. has been there since I were a kid. They still do it to this day because the effects are still good. Yeah. Like when they show you how they did the wolf transformation, very similar to that with the werewolf in London, American Werewolf in London, American Werewolf in London. Yeah, they do. They show you how how they did that transformation, like the bit with the elongating feet. Like you say, it was something mm -hmm. actual, physically extending on set, and half of that transformation was real. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was real, pra all practical effects. And uh, they show you in that show how they do it. And it's so clever. Yeah. So cool. And there, there, there is, there's something about that, 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 you know, in your head, you're either consciously or subconsciously kind of looking at stuff and going, this is real, this is not real. And I think practical effects do make things scarier. Even mm. if they look ridiculous, it makes it scarier because it's that physical thing in front of you. And I, I kind of hope we go a kind of a 180 and we kind of go back to that now and sort of horror films kind of try to be more pay more homage to to those older films if, if well, a new alien film's doing it that's that's really cool yeah well the um um i keep wanting to call her annabelle but she's not called annabelle um abigail, abigail abigail very much was in that vein so like in that film there wasn't there wasn't a massive amount of cgi in that movie there was they were all practical effects and you could tell they were they yeah. were all on set things happening yeah which was quite cool yeah especially down to like the the like the prosthetics were very similar to like lost boys with the big brow and the fangs and the the facial like way the face sort of like mm, kind of like menaced up to make the vampire was very yeah. much in the style of like buffy and lost boys and when the when they did that physical transformation it looked like that yeah with the contact that lenses cool. and stuff um uh, american werewolf in london still has one of the best transformation yeah. scenes in any werewolf movie because it's, it's real it's because it's happening in front of you speaking of jackson's um thriller i love the like say the, the documentary on that was it um was it michael london is he called the director um he was he he's done a bunch of stuff hasn't he where he basically said that um michael jackson they gave him a bunch of films to watch like day of the dead and they gave him a bunch of films to watch to kind of get the idea of what he's going to be shooting and american mm. werewolf in london was one of the films they gave him for the werewolf bit and and he was too scared to watch any of them 
he was like every time the put one on he would like screech and scream and be like no turn it off so like they couldn't physically <laughs> make him see, yeah they couldn't make him physically sit through any of these films and they had to film this horror film with him and it, like later on he went to do that ghosts one as well which was very similar and mm. they tried to redo it again didn't he and uh, again he could like he's he's scared of horror apparently <laughs> apparently he was terrified um, but that's an interesting comparison because that ghosts one isn't anywhere near as iconic but again no, that was still good though CGI. yeah but that one was all cgi wasn't that was it? cgi it was yeah it was heavily heavily cgi um john landis sorry john, john landis. landis yeah there we go oh he's sorry, I, I turned into a physical meme then <laughs> 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 um it's Vincent Price as well, isn't it? At the beginning, the yeah, darkness falls across the land. <laughs> the midnight hour is closer than I know the words to it. That's that's why I love the haunted mansion in Paris rather than the haunted mansion in Florida. In Florida, it's Thurl Ravencroft's voice, so it's the hinges creak in Dollar's chambers. Whereas you go to Paris, and it's Vincent Price, and you can tell the difference in Price's delivery of it. Yeah. It's just much creepier with with Vincent Price's voice. I think it's a much scarier ride. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they know that, it, like the Americans, are like had all the cartoony bits, whereas the European crowd, are like, yeah, just give us horror. <laughs> just give us straight up horror. Scare us. Just, just do something scary. I love watching um, the American, the Americans that do the vlogs on like coming to Paris. That is one of my favorite things to watch because they they go in expecting grim grinning ghosts come out to socialize, and they get greeted with the bride crying on the staircase and yeah. things like that. It's like, oh, this is a bit different. <laughs> yeah. I remember doing that ride as a kid when we went. <laughs> must have been one of the first times we went to Florida, not Florida, mm. went to uh, Disneyland Paris. Paris. It, was, um, it was called, what was it called originally? Disneyland Paris, wasn't it? Yeah, Disneyland Paris. Is, have they changed the name now? Uh, no, it's still Disneyland Paris. D Disneyland Paris is the name of the overall thing, and then it's Disneyland Park with a C, and then the new studios, but they renamed that recently to some mental like, adventures by Disney. Yeah. Um, but I remember going, and I... I... <sighs> What was it? 99 it opened, I think it was. Uh, no, it might have been earlier than that. No, it didn't open in 99. When did it open? 92, 93? Oh, Euro right. Disney. There we go. Andy H with the win. It was called Euro Disney originally. That's what it was, not Disneyland Paris. When Euro no, Disney originally opened. Um, yeah. And I remember going on that, that Haunted Mansion ride one of the first times I went and just being terrified. Like just being <laughs> genuinely terrified because it was like so good um i don't i can't remember if i went on it this time last time i went no, i don't think i did it's, there's even that bit where there's the grave digger and they're just, you, he's just laughing he's just stood there and he's looking directly at you going, <laughs> it's like okay <laughs> i don't know if i did so good i can't remember maybe i did euro disney oh, yeah man. euro disney was when the it was, it was owned by some um arab, like arab prince wasn't it originally like some some big uh some prince in middle east owned it at one point was it really mm. i believe that. it's now i believe it's now owned again by the american the american corporation basically owns it again now same people that run california oh wow Although um, disney Disney World has literally just become a, a man-made mousetrap now. I do, pref I do prefer Disneyland Paris to Disney World now. I've got to admit, on recent yeah, visits to Disneyland and Disney World, Disneyland has a lot more of the magic that Disney World has lost. Yeah, it's it's like the younger sibling. Disney, Disney I mean? World has gone very corporate and yeah. very yeah. They just want they're just getting people through the gate, and there's some great yeah. rides there, but the, the heart's not in it anymore. Whereas you go to Paris, you still feel the love for the park a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that one. Um, speaking about iconic horror, um, mm. M Night Shawada Wada 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 um has got a new film coming out. Yeah. Um, I only recently saw his last one, that old. Did you see that one about the beach? Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, it wasn't really a horror film. It's more of a psychological kind of yeah, mess with your head a little bit. Um. But I like he, the signs, that iconic scene in the signs where they're showing the alien on the news. Yeah, that is one of your um, that is one of your like iconic horror scenes. That bit, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, the bit with um, where he's where where they're they're talking about the aliens landing, and there's like the film of the child's birthday party, mm -hmm. and then it just kind of 
but again it's that kind of that found footage aspect of kind of not all high def and just something you see in the background um but he's done some really good things um shelly said his best film will always be the sixth sense um again just a really scary film um but he has done some good horror films and he has got a new film coming out called trap which isn't necessarily a, a horror horror film um have you seen the trailer for that one i haven't got around seeing it yet i really need to though it's got um what's his name what's the actor's name uh josh ah oh, what is his name josh richardson hartlett Hart... no i can't remember um Josh Hartnett. Oh. There we go. See, I was on it. I was on it. Josh Hartnett. Um, basically, it's a big concert. And this, I'm only telling you what's in the trailer, so I'm not giving any spoilers away. But it's a big concert. A dad and a daughter are attending a concert, and they're kind of talking about how exclusive the seats are and all this kind of stuff. And he's like, and she's like, oh, Dad, you're amazing, yada, 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 and all this kind of stuff. And he's like, oh, I'm just going to pop to the loo. Like, are you okay here? And she's like, yeah, yeah, of course. And singing along and that kind of thing. It's like kind of almost like the Taylor Swift kind of, you know, aspect of this really popular singer. Um, and he goes to the loo and he notices that look, there's police on not all of the doors and everything. And mm. then he talks to this guy at the merchandise stand. He was like, what's with all the police? And the guy goes, oh, like, don't tell anyone that I told you, but have you heard about the whatever killer? Like, supposedly this, this whole concert is set up as a trap for him. Mm. And then he kind of tweaks a little bit and then it flashes to him checking his phone. He's got someone tied up in the basement at his house and this kind of stuff. And he kind of grins and then it implies that he's the killer that they're yeah. kind of setting up to, to trap. Um, but I don't know what to, like it's one in ones where I'm like, well, where does this go? Cause if, if the film's called trap and we've already been told now that the concert is a trap to kill the, to, to trap this killer and we've been told that he's the killer. Like, where's the surprise? Where's the twist? Because obviously all of his films have got big twists in them. Um, where's the twist going to be? So I'm quite excited for that. Quite excited. <laughs> Thing is, I'm sorry, I'm starting. Uh, uh, every time I think, like, when he mentioned the twist, I can all I can hear in my head is um, IT crowd. Matt Berry's yeah. character, where he's just trying to guess the twist. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> she's really a man. It's really the yesterday. He's really too. <laughs> I, yeah, I could yeah, just hear yeah. his voice in my head when, when, when he said that then about the twist. I was all I could hear in my head is him going, I think she's a man. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's funny. That is funny. Um, but, uh, oh, there you go. Andy H said it's actually his daughter is the singer <laughs> because apparently she's a singer in real life. There you go. Oh, well, cool. Yeah. Um, which another callback he did, um, lady in the pond or something like that lady, the, yeah lady in the water or something that was lady a weird in the water. Movie. but supposedly that was a story he had made up for his daughter that he just turned into a film that's that terrifying a, why would yeah, you make that know, up right. for your kid can you imagine him as a dad dad tell me a bedtime, <laughs> tell me a bedtime story <laughs> okay <laughs> Get um but no i i'm a big fan i really like his stuff and some of his stuff is definitely it keeps you on the edge of your seat do you know what I mean? Like even things like the village, like which mm. wasn't well, village great good. Movie. I didn't think it was particularly good, mm. and it, it, at the time I was expecting more. But then when I've gone back and rewatched it, I'm like, actually, this is very clever. But it was scary. Like there was a, an element of fear, and then you realise that it's not. The fear is kind of misplaced, you know. Mm. Um, so I'm I'm a big fan of his. I really am. I always think the others is one of his movie, but it's not, is it? The others is a, a different thing altogether. But it always, oh, I, I always think that's one of his films because it's very similar to his sort of style. Yeah, no, that's that, that is that's, yeah, it it's is, a different one. It is that kind of twist, isn't it? Um, John said his movies often have great soundtracks as well. Yeah, they do. Um, Bethany Beth said the haunting scared me. Which one's the haunting? I'm trying to think. Is the haunting the one with Kate Beckinsale? And Ooh, is, it yeah, Liam so. is it Liam Neeson? Yeah, if so, that's definitely a good scary film. Uh, the Haunting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's is this what I'm thinking of. Uh, yeah. 
the one with um, Kate, uh, Catherine Zeta Jones. Sorry, Catherine Zeta Jones is in that one, and Liam Neeson, yeah. Catherine Zeta Jones, Owen Wilson, and uh, Lil Taylor. That's isn't that based loosely on the Haunting of Hill House? Yes, basically. Yeah, very loosely. Yeah, it's like they took the concept of the Haunting of Hill House and kind of twisted it round and and made it their own. Um, yeah, no, that's that is quite a, a good film. That really is quite a good film. Um, but those it's those ghost stories. Ghost stories are the ones that that definitely get me more. Look, there's a ghost. Wow, <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's a haunting. Um, <laughs> Before we go though, there's one thing that we have to talk about because we we kind of t- touched on a little while ago, and you were mentioning kind of like where is the next generation of horror going to come from? And I think we already have it. We just don't want to, we just don't want to accept it But as the, as the older, as the older people. But I think from what, like watching what my daughter watches and what's popular things like your five nights at Freddy's and your poppy's playtime, they've kind of become the, the next thing of horror. There's a lot of things like, there's a lot of stuff out there that I, I didn't realize how much of it was horror. So like the doors, oh, yeah. the doors is from Roblox, and that's a freaking horror game. And I was like, why is my daughter yeah. playing this? Like this is terrifying. She's mm-hmm. eight years old, and like I always played Five Nights anyway. But I recent, I recently got into Poppy's Playtime properly. I, I like played the actual game, and that is freaking terrifying. Yeah. And I'm like, these are aimed at kids, but they are yeah. genuinely scary horror things. Yeah, I think that is actually quite a dangerous road as well because you've got things like um huggy wuggy you've got things mm. like rainbow friends you've got things like five nights yeah. at freddy's and there is so much content out there that's quite innocent so you go on youtube um take five night uh, take huggy wuggy and, and rainbow mm. friends for example so much content that's out there that's really innocent that's just people creating road uh, minecraft maps and all this kind of stuff that children will watch but then obviously the algorithms will then take you eventually to yeah. the original videos or the kind of the 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 original kind of setting for those characters and then all of a sudden you've got kids that are scared to go to bed do you know what i mean like but you know what you, i think you might have hit the nail on the head i think your huggy wuggies your rainbow friends your five nights at freddy's i think they're this generation's kind of horror icons and if you look at the yeah. progression of like if you look at the progression of where we've come from like that five nights at freddy's was responsible for the resurgence of blind bags and this whole this whole thing of like all these little things like poppy's playtime copied the they they basically copied the footprint that five nights started Mm -hmm. huggy wuggy was released as the next freddy and Mm -hmm. then all of a sudden he had plushes he had toys they had blind bags Mm-hmm. And like you say, that if you remember when Huggy Wee first came out, there was a massive thing that went out to parents from schools and stuff saying, "Don't let your kids play this game; it's terrifying." Yeah. And like yeah. there were kids that were scared to go to bed because of that. Because obviously, it goes from being the cute, cuddly blue thing to having teeth and rah, mm. when he when he transforms into the evil Huggy. Yeah, I've dated a few girls like that before. <laughs> <laughs> They're all just nice and friendly, and then yeah, but um, like but... as as a as a guy that collects like the weird and wonderful horror stuff, like I've I've noticed like even even the more innocent stuff. So like your daddy bears now, creepy cats is the next follow on from that. Uh, blocks fruits like that one i mean they're they're li- like they're all li- little ghosts of fruits <laughs> but they're mm. ghosts and pumpkins and like evil little bats and things that they're all it's all essence of horror yeah they've all yeah, come yeah. from that and, sort of horror right even though some of them aren't scary they've come from a, a, a place of horror haven't they you know what? i think you have hit the nail on the head there because the other thing as well think back to when we were kids and we've said this so many times on the show that mm-hmm. there were toy lines for things that were massively inappropriate for us yep. um okay your terminators your aliens your predators those kind of things but you had an action figure you had a toy line or you had merchandise in your hand yep. um even freddy krueger even you know halloween and things like that you had merchandise that was aimed at the children and the children is kind of the children's involvement is what created that kind of jumping off point for a lot of them and i think i think five nights for example poppy's playtime like you say the the actual kind of origin stories and the origin content really is inappropriate for the age of 
Poppy's Playtime, for example, you say about the plushies, it, it blows my mind how many kids a couple of years ago you would see walking around with that plushie or in their mm-hmm. bucket holding on to that plushie. And you're kind of like, you're looking at it going, why has your two-year-old got that <laughs> as their toy? What, what, yeah. That makes no sense. Have you seen what that comes from? But yet it's on the shelf of Smith's, you know, like, so, oh, well, this is a cool guy. They know who he is and that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. So I think you're right. I think they might be the next. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that are going to last. That like Five ones, Nights. Gonna, look yeah. at this. Look at the story of Five Nights. Look at the story behind it. It is a child murderer that got trapped inside one of the suits and died because the spring locks activated and killed him. And the, it is the ghosts of the children that are inside the animatronics killing other children and people. Oh, I know. And I didn't realize that is that terrifying. I, film. I did not realize that that was what they were. That is the backstory. Until yeah, I yeah. watched the film and I was like, <laughs> this is messed up. Like, this is like, is this what they've created for the film? Or is this genuine? And I had to kind of, kind of do a bit of a Google. But yeah, I mean, that is in messed the up. original in the original story. It was even more messed up. The film didn't touch on this because they didn't want to. But originally, um, the the villain character would kill these kids. And he would stuff their dead bodies inside of the animatronic. That's why their ghost was in there, because their body was trapped inside of it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it is It is a messed up franchise. And like, like you say, kids are walking around with Five Nights t-shirts on at like five and six old. You're like, you should not know what that is. No, it's it's the... <laughs> it's the consumerism as well. Uh, the the, oh, yeah. the, the hard win consumerism is what what I kind of class it as, and it's that thing that you know this sells, yep, and people buy it because oh my kid loves this, but they don't understand the the real depth. You're seeing it now with Barbie, like the Barbie yeah. film. Barbie as a toy is slightly different because obviously the the toy predates the King movie. First, yeah, but the movie is not for children. The movie oh, no, is no, not no. a children's film, but yet you have all of these girls and boys singing the songs and talking about the characters, and and it's a difficult one because you're like, oh, my kid likes Barbie, but they like Barbie because of the adult film, and mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, seeing like I said, seeing two year olds holding on to huggy wuggies and that just doesn't make sense. Does not make sense unless the adult. The parents are fans of it and therefore they've bought their kid a plush of it or whatever because it's like well it's just a cuddly toy it doesn't make sense for these kids to understand that but then that's what you've got with youtube and that isn't it yep oh yeah yeah no i think you've hit the i think i think you've hit the hit and the hit, uh, hit a nail on the head um yeah roblox is roblox a massive is it? one roblox has got a new game on it uh, I'm, I'm not sure how new it is but it's called doors and I mean, yeah. I played that on my video when I did this because I wanted, I kind of said I can't talk about the toys without playing the game. I feel like a hypocrite. So I thought I'll play the game because it's, it's going to be horror related. So I thought I'll play it anyway. Did not realize how horribly like dark that is. You are basically, it was so intense. You were walking through like a uh, hotel and it's just doors and mm-hmm. you have to go into each door and try and find a key to get to the next set of doors, right? Yeah. But there could be a jump scare behind any one of those doors, and you have to. There's different ways of stopping the thing from getting you by doing certain things. Like one of them you have to look at, one of them you have to look away from, and it's remembering the different ghosts and what you've got to do to get rid of it, right? Yeah. But all that tension builds up to when you open that door, and there's that jump scare initially. It's like that is terrifying. Yeah. And um, there was that. There was a game a little while ago. Again, it was very popular called um, Emily Wants to Play. Do you ever play that? All the kids played that yeah. one. That was the same sort of thing. You were playing a pizza delivery boy that had turned up at this house to deliver a pizza. And Emily was like some... The story plays out that she was a disabled kid that ended up being locked in the basement because the parents couldn't look after her and she'd sort of like had all these pills that turned her into like a weird monster demon thing. But like that was the same sort of thing, and she and it was it was that she was moving these things around the house. Like there'd be suddenly a, a clown in the corridor, and you had to stare at the clown to make it go away, and all this kind of crap. It's like that again was aimed at kids. And yeah, that, it, it was it was horribly scary. Yeah, 
Um, Shelly said in the comments as well, the game Piggy, which was obviously... Oh, Piggy. Piggy. But that's, you know, that that is the power of the internet and that. And I suppose that is where the horror comes from because um, it's those scary movies, uh, scary videos, those scary games, like word yep. spreads. Now, do you remember Momo? Do you remember that whole phase Freaking that went hell, through? yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was literally a the, the picture of Momo was literally it was someone's like art project from somewhere. Mm-hmm. And they had found this picture on Google and then spread this kind of urban urban legend. Yeah. Legend. Well, it's like Slenderman. And, yeah. Slenderman's yeah. just an urban legend. It was a it was a competition on Reddit to who could who could make the best ghost story. And some dude managed to make a internet sensation out of it. Yeah. But those kind of like the 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 fear of doing something that you're not you shouldn't really be doing and that's games the like this biggie one that's what hooks them in and it becomes the 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 cell and i suppose like huggy wuggy is a is a prize example because i don't think a lot of people who bought the toys and bought the merchandise and that knew the backstory of the character they just saw it as a oh my kid likes this and all their friends know who it is and like yeah i'll, I'll get him that or get her that yeah the smiling critters are the new ones now they're they're gonna yeah, be the they are the I'll next big thing cartoon. i watched that cartoon you said you sent me the link to <sighs> but yeah that again they so they created that little cartoon first then the then they released the chapter three of poppy's playtime which focused on these critters and now they're releasing the plushies and the the big evil version of the cat and yeah they've got they've got all sorts going on for that now the the merchandising on it is going to be insane because like i've got knockoffs from china oh, and really? they went practically viral when i put them on my channel the little the, i've got the little vinyl figures here yeah and the, these are knockoffs from china but people are loving them because you can't physically get any merchandise yet i and think honestly, i think, I think the plushies came out like a week ago but i have i've had these a few weeks now these are just like a spin-off of Five Nights, aren't they? No, so this is the next chapter of Poppy's Playtime. So Poppy's Playtime is about a factory that creates toys, but things went wrong, and there's like a darker undertone. So like there were there were there were like there were like um, experimenting on kids and shit like that. There was like there's a very dark undertone to it. But like you've got Dog Day, who's one of the main characters in the game. He's cut off at the middle and he's hanging by his hands on a wall because all the other critters have tore him apart. <laughs> and nice. then catnap is the main kind of villain yeah. of the thing. And he's, he can, Yay, catnap! <laughs> yeah. So the, the idea was that his plushie was released because all of them were centered. So the kids would smell them and you know, mm. he, his was meant to be lavender to put the kids to sleep. But in actual fact, what they did was put this red, um mist inside of us when the kids the the kids squeezed it and breathed it in it would put them into a coma (laughs) so the the toy was recalled and um, because it was causing all these kids to drop into comas and the the toy company knew what they were doing and it was a thing to try and yeah it was like an experiment so yeah that is the messed up backstory of the critters and they're like the new they're like the new five nights of freddy's now they are the new thing that kids want to get pushes of the scariest thing about them and this and i know you'll be able to relate as well because you've got kids but the the attraction for children like my five-year-old is attracted to all of this stuff yep because they talk about it in the playground they have access to it they literally you type it in on youtube and you've got a million videos that you could you could watch if you're not like supervised or whatever and it all looks very friendly because for for a parent, those, for example, the smiling critters, you look at them, they look no different to characters that you would see on Disney Plus or Netflix, or whatever, yeah. in the children's kind of section. So parents would let their kids watch this. That's genius, really, when you think about it from a horror oh, yeah. perspective. Parents let their kids watch this, which will inevitably scar them or freak them out or whatever. Oh, it's so much better than it, the the way it's marketed is so much better than any horror film. And if you look at what like them critters, for example, you know what they're stylized on, don't you? The colours. Have you know have you noticed the theme? Well, there's something yeah. yeah, there's something in the back of your mind that you look at them and you go, They're nostalgic and I don't know why. It's because yeah. they are basically recolorizations of the care bears. The first thing I thought when you showed them to me and I was like, They're care bears. They're basically like yep. evil care bears. 
basically that's that's the thing as a, as someone because the game is aimed at us it's not aimed at kids it's aimed at people our age right yeah and that's the whole thing they're trying to make things that looked like they belonged in the 90s that's why the mm -hmm. cartoons are made to look the way it is uh, it's made to look dated um yeah. so like huggy woogie was like if you think back to your childhood there was things that looked like that as a mm. kid i can't remember the name of it but it features in jingle all the way it's like a weird y-shaped green thing it's like a big cartoon in america uh, we never had yeah. it over here that um, was basically what they stylized huggy woogie on what's he called i know who i know exactly who the, you're the about. poppy doll the the poppy yeah. doll is meant to be raggedy ann they're all based on things that have a deep connection in your mind yeah it's and the fact yeah. that the five nights at freddy's movie the fact that they got henson to make them that for me that just makes it even more creepier they've got the henson company to make those damn animatronics real yeah. so now so now kids have got a real the real life animatronics like real now because of the movie yeah it's not just a cgi 3d That's, character it's, anymore it's genius marketing really when you think it about is. it that you kind of you you jump through that firewall of parents because parents are very you know nowadays probably more so than they were back in the day they're a lot more kind of conscious about what their kids are seeing and being exposed to and stuff. But you basically hide a horror, a really dark horror behind the face of a cartoon, a, a, a yep. cutesy kind of cartoon. Because nothing about those smiling critters screams horror nope. like on the surface. And this is the thing like when we were kids we had cartoons so it was he-man and then you had the toy line turtles then you had the toy line you yeah. know what i mean like power rangers was just a big advert for bandai you know what i mean like they everything had a cartoon or a television series that went along with the toy line yeah. they've, that is basically what they've done with all these franchises they're not stupid they've basically made a game and yeah. then made the characters in it like you say very accessible to any age and yeah. they've been, then they then they realize they can sell the toy rights make a load of money because then kids will either play the game buy the toys or see the toys play the game it's a yeah. it's a little it's a nice little circle that just goes round and round yeah and makes them very rich but it's like you say about knockoffs and that though that even to the extent where okay things like rainbow friends we've started to now see the merchandise the blind bag yeah. the action figures that kind of stuff but Six months ago when it was really popular, eight months ago when it was really popular, there wasn't that merchandise out there. But you could go on somewhere like AliExpress and get the knockoff figures straight away, delivered within a week. Because, you know, companies out in China, whatever, making these kind of very soft, you know, cheap kind of plastic figures of these characters. There's there's nothing really copyrighted in the way they look. So Bendy, when Bendy came out, if you remember that, they made action figures yeah. for it. However, Cup Cuphead never really got any official merch, but it was a really popular little, little game. Yeah. Amazon, fifteen quid. I've got the entire I got an entire bag full from China. Fifteen quid and I've got every figure. There like the, the dark evil little demon and like the female version of Cuphead and Yeah. So you can go on these sites, you can get the merchandise, the kids can have the figures in front of them. They then start playing their own games, building their own kind of setups. And then that character, that franchise is a part of their childhood. It's a part of their kind yeah. of existence in that respect. And they're and all then... on Amazon. They run Amazon. So I was I was really surprised at how easy it was like me. I mean, like you're saying like AliExpress and stuff. You can get it on Amazon. It was it was not it's not even hidden away. It took me ten seconds to find all the cheap knockoffs from China. I got the I got the the the, the plushers on Amazon. You just need to know the keyword that they're using and that's it. You've got all the knockoff stuff from China on there wow <laughs> wow and then sites like Timu and that coming out now you can yep. get the stuff for like even cheaper yep. like yep, yep, yep. no i think it's you've crazy. hit the nail on the head mate i think the next set of iconic characters that are going to kind of outlive the the decade or whatever are going to be the the yeah. roblox minecraft look at the resurgence of things like monster high they're getting the girls hooked on it as well and it's not just the boys stuff monster high they're all based on universal monsters admittedly it's not horror it's not scary but it's still from the background of horror mm. there's yeah. still the element there in the background it's still based on dracula frankenstein wolfman the mummy you know what i mean yeah. and the kids are learning about that through a 3d cartoon about girl power <laughs> yeah that's mad that is mad. But they're still learning that like like in because like the they've just made the live action movies for monster high and mm -hmm. they've got like dracula's in it 
So like kids are learning yeah. that oh Dracula, that's the daughter of Dracula. Who's Dracula? Let's go Google. We've got Google on his phones and computers. Yeah. It's a gateway to horror. They're all gateway horrors, if you will. They we are. had them growing up. We had Are You Afraid of the Dark? We had Goosebumps, but not not to this extent. We didn't have the merchandising that this these have got. And I think the difference is that there's no regulation. Because it's online yeah. and it's part of a game, like you, you could go out, you could create a mod for Roblox or whatever tomorrow yeah. and release it and hide something in there that is messed up or freaked. And as long as it kind of doesn't as long as it doesn't alert any of the 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 firewall kind of things that are in place, it will get through and, and scare. I have to say it, look at Among Us. As daft as it is, look at Among Us. What are, what are kids if they if you look at what kids are playing, what are the kids doing on Among Us? They're playing a serial killer on a ship. <laughs> yeah. They are they are the imposter among them. That is literally the whole point of the game. You are you are trying to spot the killer. <laughs> yeah. In your well, own little horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> huh. yeah. But hidden behind cute a cutesy little, little yeah little characters that run around the met little noises dip 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 as the oh, run my, and, oldest oh, son, yeah. my oldest son had so many of those blind bags because he wanted to collect <laughs> them all up and stuff like that but the whole game is to to kill off your murder each other not, kill not, off all your friends <laughs> and be, be creative about it do do it in a way that people aren't going to guess that it's you it's like wow this teaching is them how to do it without getting caught this is messed up <laughs> i think that the, the lack of regulation is what really plays a part in that because things won't make it onto you look at things like disney plus and netflix and and all those kind of streaming sites like you have parental controls you have parental profiles children profiles and even to the extent we're on disney plus and i don't know if you've ever noticed this but on disney plus moana doesn't show up on a children's profile you, know, you can not? only watch it through an adult's profile um it's one of our favorite films we put it on all the time but my, my youngest son goes on, he goes on his profile and we can't get it up on his profile. We have to go back on and log on to one of ours because Moana, for some reason, doesn't doesn't fit the, flags. the, the yeah. hole. Yeah, it flags up. Whereas these internet things do not have those flags. They don't nope. have those hoops that they have to jump through. They kind of go, you know what, I'm going to create this character and this is... Things like the, the Smiling Critters, what you're saying there about the dog being cut in half and hung up, that's mm. something that wouldn't get through on like a, a a the the like watershed whatever the wording is or whatever yeah. but it wouldn't get through on things like disney plus and netflix and that but on the internet go for it like go for it yeah and nine times out of ten kids are using their their, their parents or mum's phone and they're just they've got free reign of youtube because there's no lock on it and oh yeah, yeah yeah it's all visible and even on it thing is even on youtube kids this is what i found funny the other day youtube kids i super sorrel comes up I come up on yep. YouTube kids, right? And kids can even, this is the mad part. Kids can even watch me unbox Freddy Krueger. Like those videos still appear on YouTube kids. Wow. So like, I understand that my Disney stuff's going to show up. Yeah, there's no wrong with that. But then I'm like, it's your friendly smile, mate. That's what it is. They're like, yeah, that's the thing cool. though, isn't it? It's like, but I'm unboxing a, yeah. If you think of the story of Freddy and what he is. Yeah. That's on YouTube kids. And you're like, oh my God. Like there is literally no regulation anymore. No. Like you say, <laughs> uh, I feel like this um, has become more of a PSA than is. a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this feels more like a PSA than a horror chat. Check check what your kids are looking at on the internet, people. Um, <laughs> you never know. No, but bringing it back to horror, I think you are right. I think that Five Nights, Huggy Wuggy, all that kind of stuff. That's your horror for this generation. They're they're the characters that this generation are going to remember in ten years' time rather than anything that we're currently seeing in a movie that's my that's my thing and before we do disappear i'm going to pull this one up rachel said super sorrel you're mine and my husband's favorite toy hunter <laughs> bringing from san diego you are awesome thank you very much rachel that's lovely there are two of us on the screen um but, <laughs> <laughs> i'm only joking i'm only joking um that's really really nice um going back to some other comments as well um ice mint said finally i can watch you i've got lots of work done to watch this well we do appreciate it thank you very much for tuning in he also said that he used to be scared of mojo i think me i think they're talking momo, momo. Um, so much that i couldn't sleep for three hours it's a specific amount of time but i agree i agree um <laughs> there we go um 
Andy H has said, my mate was petrified of Momo. He's six foot seven and built like a barn door. I may have broken a few times with those pictures, mainly because I'm a lovely person. Um, <laughs> but that's, that's the thing that like Momo, um, you know, Momo was that, um, if you actually look into it, the actual image of Momo was, was some art project that mm. it, it was really a really innocent art project of like human dog or something like that. And somebody found that picture on the internet and went, yeah, I'm going to, going to make something messed up of this. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, Rachel Fox, <laughs> sorry, your friend's awesome too. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Uh, Shelly said, my kids weren't bothered by that at all. No, but I think the thing that was scary about Momo was the, the idea of what was there. It was that mm. whole, and this again is what horror as a genre, I think is missing. They're so good at giving us everything. This is what it is. This is what the character looks like. This is where the, the story goes. Whereas things like this was all about that suspense. It was all about that build up, Like you were saying, Sorrel, it was about, you don't want to look at this picture because of X, Y, and Z. So yeah. people were scared of the, I don't think it was actually the image of what they looked like. I think it was more the, the anticipation of not wanting to yeah. look at it. Um, John Hood said, has anyone mentioned the shining? We didn't actually talk <laughs> about the shining. Very good horror film. Very, very good horror film. Um, there we go. There we go. Do you know, um, I, often, I often think if they revisit The Shining as a as a Netflix, like a like a, like a, like a Netflix series, ten mm. part kind of thing, they could really spam that out and have some great stories in it. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good one actually. That would be a good one. Um, all right. Anything else you want to add? No, I kind of I've kind of gone through everything I wanted to chat about. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad we definitely touched on uh, the whole Five Nights Freddy's thing because like I think it's so un like. In the toy world and in the horror world, I think it's so overlooked. I really do. Mm. Yeah. But there's a there's a definite that like I say, there's a definite thing of that for the toy industry as well. It revamped this whole blind bag craze because mm -hmm. every to every toy company, if you look at that, how many come out each week, like uh, like the the pet simulator, and then recently, more recently, was, is it called Adopt Me or something? They've suddenly popped up. Yeah. And like all the Roblox stuff, you know, the thingy friends, doors. I'm looking at them now because I've got them all in a box inside of me. All the stuff has just popped up one after another, after another, after another. Mm. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, um, not going away anytime soon. No, no. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining in, jumping on with a chat. Um, if we didn't get to your comments, um, do apologize. Uh, we have tried our best to kind of stick with it. Um, thanks for joining in with our kind of horror chat um i quite like this i quite like sort of taking a the theme and running with it um mm. horror is a good one to kind of kick off on this week um so let's see what that trailer brings tomorrow and if it is a decent yeah. trailer maybe we'll jump on for half hour and just kind of break it down um yeah i'm not want to go on do you know what for for uh, for, uh, for next week's show do you know what i think we should talk about what the 90s oh let's do a 90s episode let's talk you know dexter's laboratory and saved by the bell and keenan and cal and yeah uh, 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 and let's go back to his 90s childhood tv stuff yeah let's 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 go back to the 90s <laughs> next week episode 149 we're going back to the 90s yeah um Cool. Thanks very much, everyone, for tuning in. Um, Sorrel, if we, if anyone's watching on Catch Up, what do they need to put in? Hashtag Catch Up Crew. Hashtag Catch Up Crew. Loads of people already saying. Um, Rachel say nineteen nineties. Yes. Shelley say nineties chat. Yes. Um, theme for another show. Kay's cooking. <laughs> um, but yes, we will talk nineties. Let's do nineties next week. Um, talk about everything nineties. Thanks very much for watching. If you are watching on Catch Up, like Sol said, hit that hashtag Catch Up Crew and let us know. Um, of course, we'll be back next week with 149, and then the week after that is episode 150, which feels like a big, feels like a, a big, yeah. big one. Um, but yeah, 150. So yeah, we'll be back next week. Thank you very much for staying on board. Thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Check out the video description for all the links to various different social medias and all that kind of stuff. Until next week, 
Kibiki. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and of course subscribe. Tune in next week for another live show. Until then, keep it geek. Stay up to date at www.geekweekinreview.co.uk.